Man, I love yeah. bad anime censorship. I think my favorite is Yu Yu Hakusho. The crazy thing about Yu Yu Hakusho is it was airing censored and uncensored simultaneously. It was on uh, Toonami back when Toonami was like the late afternoon, early evening block. And it was also on Adult Swim and the Adult Swim version was uncensored. And that anime had some fucked up things happen. And the one that really comes to mind is the character called the Gourmet. Um, this guy's power is... Hang on. Uh -oh. oh, damn it. I fucked up. What was the problem? Oh, I want to hear him say stuff, um, but apparently they got cut off. Anyway, um... Yeah. So I do love Mugshot. So yeah, the gourmet. Uh, so... Yeah, so... Uh, like a lot of animes, he had a themed power set where it's just like, Hey, uh, I'm part of this evil team, right. here's my weird gimmick power. And his was... He could eat people oh. and get their powers. So there's a side character that the main character uh -huh. meets and kind of befriends. And then when the gourmet shows up, he's showing off like all of that guy's powers. It's like, how oh do you have God. that? It's like, well, let me tell you. Um, and you see that in silhouette uh -huh. and that's uncensored in both versions. Um, nice but job, a side man. character uh, who has like crazy uh, body manipulation powers was supposedly killed in an earlier arc, and then his, like, head is in the oh, new villain's shit. fish tank. <laughs> and he's still alive oh, wow. and still talking to him. Um, because he's the kind of shape-shifting character where it's like, I can change my body uh -huh. to whatever I want. I don't need that internal organs sense. anymore. And, like, this guy's uh -huh. already faked death twice. So at some point you see the the big bad of this arc just pull him out of the fish tank oh. and throw him at the gourmet. And again in silhouette, uh -huh. you see the gourmet eat him. Um, and then it comes time to fight. Uh, and now he has psychic powers from like, I'm going to mind read you. And Kurama, my favorite character in that comes out. And he's just like, okay. And he just kind of stands there and nothing's happening. And he's like, what are you? Next thing you know, Kurama's fucking like rose whip is wrapped around this guy's jaw from, like, it's wrapped in his mouth. And it's like, how'd you do that? I went on pure instinct, by the way. And he pulls it and he tears the Holy guy's shit. upper head off. It's decapitation huh. at the jaw, not at the neck. And then he stands there for a second and he's like, you can stop pretending, you can come out now. And the fucking shapeshifter comes out of the guy's and the, yeah. the gourmet is this buff dude. So he comes out and his neck is growing out of the stump wow. of this guy's face. And it is so that fucked is up incredible. and amazing. <laughs> and in the uh -huh. shitty uh, censored version, all they did is they photoshopped his oh. head bigger. So it was the size that of the guy's no original sense. head. So you couldn't see the oh stump of his old head. Oh my it looks so bad. And I fucking <laughs> loved it. Yeah, sometimes the censorship <laughs> is more entertaining than the lack of. Oh man, the the four kids dub of mm -hmm. One Piece had some of the worst. It's like, oh, this guy fires poison darts. They're oh my sticky God. cut darts. <laughs> oh, that's so that bad. I love it. I kind of wish I could get the four kids DVD. Like, not to hear the fucking theme song. Good Christ, uh, if I never hear that theme song again, it's too soon. It's like, oh man, oh let's make God. it a rap. Because that's always a good idea. <coughs> oh God, it was painful. I remember. I remember the night where they switched the broadcast from the four kids mm -hmm. to the Funimation dub. And I thought the opening was a commercial oh. for something else. Because, well, here's the thing. Um, I didn't know when they were changing the dub. I just heard that for, uh, Funimation got it. And Funimation is not a shitty company. Um, and this is the thing. A lot of times, they don't dub mm -hmm. the opening theme song. They'll play it in the original Japanese. And then I hear, like... Set your sails, raise your flag. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. this is a commercial for something really neat. And then it starts going. I'm like, this is a really <laughs> long commercial. And then I see the characters and I'm like, this is a really elaborate commercial for One Piece. And then it starts up and it's a full episode. 
and all the characters have new voices nice. that don't sound god awful. I'm like, holy shit, I can finally <laughs> watch this series. This was back before I would watch a lot of things uh, right, right. subbed if I could help I it. I think we pretty much all started like, like that, at least people from our generation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, we all. there's always that friend in college or high school or whatever where it's like, no, you always have to watch it in the original Japanese because the yeah. American voice acting is awful. And to be fair, back in like the 90s, mid 2000s, uh, yes. Yes, it was. A lot of the dubs then were just the worst things. The uh, Slayers. Um, I watched like, I tried both the to subbed and the dubbed, and I couldn't understand how anyone would ever watch the dubbed. Really? I was just <laughs> about to bring that up. Like, I have the DVDs for the dubbed version. Because um, I was into getting DVDs of anime series before I could really afford to go... Uh, well, not a four, but knew where to go uh -huh. to get the, the subversions. So, uh, I had that dubbed, and I watched the dub, and I thought it was great at the time, because I was an idiot and didn't know better. Uh, good lord trying to go back to that series. Like, there's maybe two voice actors redeemable in that whole thing, and one oh, of them's a boy. joke character, so fuck it. Um, but nowadays, like... The only big complaint is a lot of anime has the same mm -hmm. cast of voice actors and a lot of mm -hmm. them do not have a great range. They're perfectly fine uh, VAs and they do a lot of really good work, but you can uh -huh. tell who they are right off the bat. Same thing goes with a lot of video games like uh, like Johnny Young Bosch and uh, uh -huh. Yuri Lowenthal. You hear them and you immediately know it's them. Um... Like, there's a bunch of others whose names I can't remember off the top of my head. But, like, you, you look at them, and it's like, okay, you list off the characters, and you just know that okay. that's them. Yeah, that makes sense. They don't have range. Um, uh, Steve Bloom actually has really good range. It's just sad that everyone wants him to just do Spike Spiegel. Or it's like, do, oh. do the Cowboy Bebop voice. It's like, I, I can do other things. Yeah, that's do, actually do worse the than someone Bebop. who doesn't like, have he's fucking... doing a whole bunch of things. Is someone who does not being yeah. allowed to do anything else. Yeah. Well, I mean, Murray like, to give you an example, and this, this a lot of people okay, are going to say this so doesn't count because it's a goofy voice. Really? He was <laughs> Gilmon in Digimon. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. And it's a bunch of um not, interviews out there of him going like, it was one of the most fun jobs I had because I got to goof off the whole time and do this silly voice. Yeah. Instead of my suave voice that he does in everything. Yep, and I forgot that I needed to fire at the lock. <laughs> Time to move, Sly. Because I'm an idiot. Yeah. I think this is one that you either got on the first or the second try. Yeah, I think probably <clears throat> the second. Yeah. I think I accidentally shot him the first time, if I remember correctly. Well, we'll find out. Yep. Um, but on the subject of voice actors, like uh. Yeah. Ah, oh, damn it! I just had his name. Um. <laughs> Scott McNeil. Oh, yeah. Scott McNeil has a great range of voices that he does. Uh, most of them mm -hmm. are, like, granted, really cartoony and weird. No. Uh, but he gets into them, and he is a treat to watch record. Oh, really? Like, well, first off, he's the kind of guy that wears a cowboy hat and cowboy boots fucking everywhere. Oh, God. Um, but he kind of plays it up. It's not because it's not because he's like, I'm a cowboy. It's because, oh, yep, there you go. Oh, that's what I do. You, you hit exploded barrels. Yep. Um. He's a hoot and a half. He's a really charming guy. I've I've, I've run into him a couple of times at conventions. Never mm -hmm. hung out because like VAs at anime Sly. conventions are swamped Boy. wherever they go. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. one of my favorite videos is uh, the Boy. they were doing like a behind the scenes for Dawn of War, which is a franchise that has a lot of really terrible voice acting. Um, <laughs> but terrible in that great kind of B movie hammy sort of way. Yeah. Um, and he does a lot of voices for that franchise. And, like, it's going through and showing all the other VAs, and they're just being like, Hi, I'm such and such, and I do this voice. Or, I'm such and such, and I'm this character. And then uh -huh. it cuts to Vi uh, Scott, and he's in the recording booth, hamming, doing a line, and he flubs it. He's like, strike that one from the record. These are my <laughs> words, and I shall use them. Oh, is that where you got That's that? That's where I got that. That's him oh. flubbing a line during some recording session. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Um... <laughs> 
and he, he's he's very well respected in the in the in the anime and voice acting community. And everyone loves him, and he's great. Good. Um, there there's a couple who are complete douchebags. I'm not gonna name names, but like, mm -hmm. I have a story of mine where a like a friend of mine punched one in the face because of something really? he did. Yeah, I'll tell you that wow. off camera. Um, yeah. Okay. But like, holy crap, that, that's a story and a half. Oh, yeah. I'm not telling on the show though, deal with it. Yeah. Um, you can feel sad yeah. if you want. But going back to the whole like anime and translations, there's a couple I would argue are better in English. Hmm. Um, you have ones like Ghost Stories where there really wasn't a lot going on in the original Japanese and they oh. just flub the script. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Ghost Stories is amazing in the English dub. Yeah, it's... Because it, it turns it from a just normal, cheesy, horror Japanese thing into an actual hilarious comedy. Yeah. Well, and, like, Samurai Pizza Cats does something very similar, uh, which you may have been ready to talk about as well. Um, I wasn't going to bring up Samurai Pizza Cats. I was going to bring up uh, Shin-chan. Uh -huh. Shin-chan's another one that gets really adult in the English dub, and in the Japanese, it's this innocent kid show. Oh, okay. Um, I'm actually not familiar with that one. Shin-chan is, uh, it's another one of those little slice of life's where it's like, uh, -huh. uh, here's this little boy and it's his little boy things. Like he's obsessed with a costume superhero character. Uh, he's kind of a brat and mm -hmm. it's just like day to day kind of everyday life stuff. Okay. Um, but then in the English dub, like the characters are inserting little extra things whenever you don't see the characters faces, like, Man, this character is doing such and such. God, she looks like a lesbian right now. Oh, God. <laughs> or, like, there's an episode where um, a new villain shows up on the show, and it's this kind of pretty boy, and uh, the mom character uh, gets, like, a little bit of a crush, and she's like, God, I would sit on his face all day long. Or, like, oh little things God. like that. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. So that's, that's how that works. Um, and then you have series that I would legitimately argue are better in English. Bakano is the one that really comes to mind. Uh -huh. um, mainly because of the subject matter. That's a series about Prohibition era gangsters. Okay. So you get like all the proper accents and it's one of those series where like half of it is Japanese English anyway. Yeah, or it's like, it looks like I was being a complete idiot by the way. Yeah, this is another one where I cut because uh, you went in here and died doing something. Oh, okay. Um, and then couldn't find my way back for a second. Yeah. All right. But, like, uh, the other thing is that has a bunch of Italian names, and Italian is one of those languages that doesn't sound good put through the Japanese pronunciation system. Um, and the other cool thing about the Bakano dub is, uh, because a lot of the characters are over 30, they had to go hire a bunch of BAs that aren't usually in the anime community. Okay. Because... Like, when you listen to anime, when you get characters over 30, once you get more than four in the series, suddenly you have to go hire new voice actors. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, Because there's not too many, because so many anime characters are, like, teenagers. Mm -hmm. But in this, there's only, like, two. So they hired all these people from outside, and listening to the commentary for those is amazing. Because uh -huh. one of them plays this character called Lad Rousseau, who is this homicidal maniac who is one of my favorite characters in anything who's just okay. so happy and excited about murder it's like <laughs> the most of his story arc takes place on this train that he wants to like take hostage to get money uh -huh. but another group is trying to take hostages so that they can steal something off the train and a third group are trying to take hostages so that they can free their leader from prison Oh. So it's one of these situations. So there's a great scene where it's the dining car. It's dinner time. On one end, this one guy pulls out two guns and he's like, all right, everybody, hands in the air. Opposite side, there are two guys with Tommy guns. All right, everybody, down on the ground. And the middle, somebody pulls out a knife and he's like, nobody move. And then the people are just like, which one do we do? And the guy with the knife just looks at his knife and he's like, Dinner, I'm sorry for intruding. Dancing. It kind of sneaks off. Help you out. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's and amazing. You don't mind dying and then you cut to jail. Lad nah, Russo, who is just lamenting the fact you, that he's not yourself. in the dining car where he can kill people. Because mm -hmm. somebody else won their game of rock, paper, scissors, or whatever. 
Oh God. And the person is like, well, why are you being a good boy? Good boy about this. Why don't you just go have your fun? He's like, Dollface, you're beautiful. Remember, <laughs> I'm gonna be the one that gets to kill you. Oh my God. And so he's like walking down the hallway and it's like, oh, danger, danger. This is getting exciting. And then you hear gunshots. He's like, ooh, guns. I love guns. And then his machine guns like, machine guns? We didn't bring any machine guns. Ooh, <laughs> this is getting exciting. Oh, who's shooting who? Is it my guy or is it their guy? Who's dying? Is there blood? Oh, things are getting exciting. Yes, 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 yes. He's like skipping down the hallway. And the guy doing this, like in the commentary is talking about it and he's just like, yeah. So I put him all, a lot of my stuff of this character on my demo reel because I had a lot of fun doing this character. I think uh -huh. it's one of my better roles. And I've had security called to take me out of the building after hearing me do this voice. It's oh like, my that God. That is great. That is a really good voice. Uh, we are yeah. scared for our lives right now. Um, <laughs> so these large men are going to escort you out of the building if you don't mind too much. Oh my God, that's great. Well, I think his problem was he was using the character's famous you are my favorite type of person to kill speech. Oh. And if you pull that speech out without good context and without warning people ahead of time, it can be really terrifying. Yeah. Because it's, it's like you, you have that look, that look where nothing can hurt you right now. You're not even thinking about death. It's the furthest thing from your mind. You could be thinking about what you're going to be doing tomorrow or what you're going to be doing for dinner tonight. You're in your happy place. You don't see it coming. You think you're something special, that something can protect you. You are my absolute favorite kind of person to kill. <laughs> It's great. I love that character so much. Yeah, it's, he seems like your kind of guy as well. Yeah, and the whole series is great in English. I don't think of the main characters as a single bad voice actor in the lot. Hmm. Granted, I'm apparently a bad judge of this because I've had a bunch of people come up to me and like, what the fuck are you talking about? There's a bunch of terrible acting and dust. Hmm. And that was one of the things I was giving a pass on that game. So what the what the fuck do I know? Yeah. Um. But yeah. Yeah, I actually heard that from a few other people, too. Just, what? Dust doesn't have good voice acting. It's like, what? I thought it was fine. Yeah, like, Fidget, Dust, and Aura were, re yeah. were solid. Mm -hmm. uh, Augustin, I I adore Augustin 100%. Yeah. Um, Like, some of the characters are kind of iffy, and Mudpot is Mudpot. Uh-huh. But, like, Gaius is fine? Yeah. Uh, like, all the mains are fine. And that's really what matters. Because mm -hmm. the side characters don't have enough screen time for them to not matter. Yeah. Maybe that was the issue. Maybe. Or maybe people just don't like the main characters' maybe. voices. Who knows? To each their own. I I thought they were fine. Yeah. Um, oh, here's a moment where you got lost. Yeah. Well, I, I kept missing the damn mattresses. Yup. Because, I don't know, for some reason I just didn't see them on the ground. Although I think that one... Like, by that time, I'd, I'd learned my lesson and looked for one when I couldn't find out where to go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna hunt you down, Cooper. I do love you the dynamic between these two. Yeah, it's a fun, they just, it's a fun well, group. Well, they have this banter that they always do, and, like, she sounds so serious, and he's always just this kind of, well, he's sly. He, he's exactly what his name says. Yeah, it's a, And it's just a lot of fun. It's a nice juxtaposition. Yeah, but you can tell she actually, like, cares about him specifically, even though she really wants to bring him in. Yeah. Well, Very it, driven character, but has some con conflicting emotions. Yeah, it, it comes off like she thinks he could be better than this. Yeah, exactly. Which is always when you, like, are the most disappointed in somebody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, if you look at somebody and you're like, you're, like... S retail store manager is your peak. This is as high as you're gonna go. Like, yeah. to hear them not do great, it's like, well, gold star, you tried. Uh huh. When you get somebody who's like really talented and could be like a household name and they just don't do anything, that's when it's just like, what are you doing? Yeah. Or when they become a household name for the complete wrong reasons. Yeah. Like, some people who are brilliant with numbers and, like, turn into, like, the scummiest of bankers. Yeah. And just rip everyone off. It's like, you could have done better than this. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. 
Yay, disappointment! Yeah. Although, to be fair, what Sly does isn't really evil or anything. He only steals from people who pretty much deserve it. Yeah. Well, it's the it's the Robin Hood archetype. Yeah. The noble thief. Yeah. And he pretty much only steals from other thieves, so it's even more specific than the Robin Hood archetype. Yeah. It's like the noblest of noble thieves. Mm-hmm. Which I'm I'm not actually a huge fan of. Oh yeah? Yeah, I like the the characters that are doing like a less than noble profession for completely ignoble reasons. Mm -hmm. Like, no, th no, they don't dress it up. They own up to it. It's like, no, I'm a thief because I like to steal things. Yeah. The anti hero That makes sense. And not just the... Like, I think there's a big problem these days where people confuse all anti-heroes for the brooding anti-hero. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of... There, there's a lot of anti-heroes out there that are not, like, trench coat and grim brooding kind of anti-hero. Yeah. Like, um... Ah, god damn it. The, the main the character... The magnificent bastard. Well, there, not even that. Like, the pathetic anti-hero. Oh, yeah, there's that too, I guess. Like, um... I'm trying to remember the name of the, the main character of the Metamorphosis. Oh, um, Gregor. Yeah, Gregor. Yeah. Gregor is an anti-hero. Because he's not what you would expect a hero to be. Um, and he never lives up to any kind of hero expectations. Mm-hmm. Uh, because he's just this pathetic sad sack of crap. Yeah, pretty much. Um, also, I apologize to everybody for missing that alarm. Yeah. Well, the, you're not it too gets, far from the end of the level. So. Yeah. It's just mildly annoying for now. Yeah. Um, but like, the the trouble with video games is uh, so much of it is about power mm -hmm. that you can't have the pathetic anti-hero in a lot of game types. Yeah. Like, I've been playing a lot of Hand of Fate, and there's a line in that that perfectly sums this up, where it's, at its core, games are about power, the acquisition of power, the holding on to power, and most of all, the use of power. Yeah. So it's... Um, I'm trying to remember. There's one game... I played it recently, I think, where the main character... Oh, shit, it wasn't a game. It was an anime. Never mind. <laughs> I was thinking of... um. No, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it's the one where you have this, like these characters have cell phones and they've got powers um, attached to those cell phones so they can see things. Uh, Future Diary is mm. the English name of it. Yeah, I know which one you're and talking about now. The main character in that is a complete pathetic asshole. Like he's the worst kind of person just because he's so weak. Well, you get you actually get that a lot in anime. Like uh, Shinji Ikari is probably the er type of the pathetic hero in anime. And what's he from? Evangelion. Oh yeah, that's right. I've never seen it. Yeah, it's like <laughs> which is a, probably a blasphemy to some. Uh, it's worth a look if only for like all the cultural references because so much draws from right. it. Right. And that's yeah, that's probably why it's blasphemy that I haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be the type where it's like, it's this amazing work of art. There's a lot of problems with it. Right. Um, and like as a teenager, I thought it was the greatest thing ever. Now that I've mm -hmm. had like more of an education under my belt, it's like, wow, this is so much armchair philosophy. <laughs> yeah, that's not too shocking. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably the reason a lot of people like it is because it was one of the first like somewhat deep things they'd seen. Yeah. Like, it's trying to say more than nothing at all, but it's... Like, a lot of it is undergrad-level philosophy. 